Good afternoon and welcome to Investor Schooling Live, coming to you from Investor Schooling Headquarters. We're in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. I'm Phil Falcone here with my business partner, Larry Steinhaus. We are the founders of Investor Schooling. What do we do here? We teach people about real estate investing and stock option investing. Call us with your questions now at 855-939-1137. That's 855-939-1137. Yes, do you believe it? We are a live program. We're actual real people who invest in real estate, do stock options, and we're in the Philadelphia area. Okay, so we serve the whole Philadelphia area. We're available to our students two nights a week at Investor Schooling that's located in Langhorn. So we're in a real brick-and-mortar building. We're real Philadelphia guys who are here to help you. If you want to learn this business, from pe you want to learn it from people who live it every day. And guess what? Our school is open. Yo, Larry, what's up, man? Are we really open, Phil? I can't believe it. But it, it used to be more exciting to say we were open when no one was allowed to be open. Yeah. And we snuck it in anyway. I'm just letting people know, hey, we're open. You can actually come to our school. We will actually let you in. <laughs> come in and sit down. Yeah, exactly. Come and sit down and, and be sociable. You know, it's funny. My, my wife talks about it all the time that we, we go out. Even like last night when, uh, not last night, but Friday night when the, when the four of us went out. So uh, Phil, Phil uh, myself, my, and our wives, we all went out. And we had a really good time. And we were talking about how nice it was to socialize with people again. I mean, it's been horrible out there where you just can't talk to people. It, it's, it's, it's weird. We were sitting in a real bar. Yes, a real bar. A real bar on Friday night with about 40 people sitting around the bar and nobody was wearing a mask. And the amazing thing was we survived. Yeah, you know, also about that, we, we were talking. Was it the owner or the manager that we were talking to? I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't I know. know. Yeah, it was one of the guys. He was, thinking, he, was saying, he, he was more afraid of people being, you know, uh, of people ratting him out for people not wearing masks than he was of anything that had to do with COVID or anything like that. He was just like, look, he was like, you know, I make people wear masks because we're afraid we're going to get ratted out. We're going to have to close. He was afraid of the Big Bad Wolf's task force. Yeah, exactly. The, we've, the, we've met some of those yeah, people. Yeah, we've met some of those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We met them all right. They're very charming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so what else is happening, Phil? What's going on? What's going on with real estate right now? Oh, you want to actually talk about some real estate? All right, let's, let's do it. Let's talk a little bit about real estate because I think that's, uh, that's important for us. Well, uh... You want to talk a little bit about uh, Florida real estate investments I did? Oh, yeah. You got something pretty good going on in, in Florida, don't you? Yeah, sure. I got some nice nice properties down there. So uh, in, 20, in 2012, I wish I started in 2010. So <clears throat> so real estate market obviously crashed in 2008, right? And uh, I figured I'd give it a couple of years, and two years turned into four years. But I probably would have had a uh, an extra million or two if I had gone to Florida in 2010 instead of 2012. But I still did well down there. So I went down there in 2012 to do what I call like an equity play. I was going to grab as much real estate as I could, and I was going to buy it and hold it and manage it. Mostly everything that I bought, I turned into a vacation rental. And the idea behind it was to sit on this property because, so in, in 2012, when I finally made the decision to go to Florida, I didn't, didn't even know what city in Florida I was going to start investing in. So um, I was invited to a wedding in Naples. My cousin was getting married in Naples, which is on the West Coast, very far down south, kind of on the level of Miami, but on the West Coast. So I flew into Tampa, which was nowhere near Naples, and the plan was that my wife and I were going to drive up and down the coast. We're going to drive all the way down the coast, go to the wedding, and drive all the way up the coast to go back. And we were going to find a city to invest in. Now, I'd already been to the east coast of Florida many, many times because my grandmother lived in Hollandale. My brother lived in Hollywood. My aunt lived on the east coast as well. Uh, my uncle lived there. So I have a lot of family members living on the east coast of Florida. So I was very familiar with that side, and I wanted to see what the West Coast looked like before I started investing. And Tampa's a cool city, uh, but it's not really a vacation town. It's really a business. It's, it's, it's just like any other city. It's a business town. 
lots of big corporations and things like that. So Tampa's a good place to live if you if you need a job, but I'm not that kind of guy. Uh, I'm looking for real estate investing opportunities. So we drove all the way down the coast. We went to St. Pete, which is a beautiful place. And I had never been to Sarasota. And when we went to Sarasota, uh, I can't ex- give you the whole story of what convinced me, but it was almost like I just looked at my wife and I said, Honey, we're home. It, <laughs> it, it, it's a very friendly, open place. One of the biggest things that I, I talk about is, so when I was down at Naples for the wedding, if you've ever been to Naples, they have like a beach road. Beach road is... The beach is right there, but you can't see it because these hotels build these massive hotels on the beach, and then they build a massive wall. Imagine a wall 30 feet high with a gate guarded by a security guard. You can't even see the beach, right? And I really was like, geez, this, this, the beach is supposed to be something given to us by God, or by the universe, whoever you believe in. And when I drive down a beach road, I I think it's kind of a requirement that you should be able to see the beach. But you can't in Naples, right? Because of these these gigantic hotels that are so worried about keeping riffraff out instead of worrying about bringing in people to do business there and stay in the hotel and eat and drink and all those good things. So that's the main reason that we picked Sarasota. It also had the hook. So if you're going to be in the vacation rental business, you need a hook. So what's a hook? A reason that people want to come to your town. Well, Sarasota is very often listed as the number one rated beach in the United States. Now, the people who do it is Travel Magazine and another uh, organization called Dr. Beach. And they evaluate beaches all over the United States. And uh, St. Pete, a lot of West Coast beaches win this award. St. Pete and Sarasota are every couple of years, they they get the rating again of number one rated beach. And think about that for a second. You got all these beaches in California. You got all these beaches in Hawaii. You got beaches in Texas, all up and down the East Coast. None of those ever win. Uh, But this this is the hook. This is the reason. Beach lovers... Once you go to Siesta Key, Florida, which is the actual uh, name of the island that sits inside of Sarasota County, if you go there just once and you're a beach person, it will ruin every single beach you ever go on for the rest of your life. So anyway, I went down there, I borrowed a bunch of private money, uh, millions and millions of dollars in private money, a little under $8 million, I recall, was the amount of money that I borrowed. Uh, we went to private money because after the crash of 2008, banks weren't lending to real estate investors. When, when the market crashed in 2008, if a real estate investor had 50 properties, he didn't just foreclose on one or two properties. A lot of these guys lost every property they had, and banks went sour on real estate investors. So I had to borrow money from private investors. Who are private investors? They're people, people who have money, it's people who can do the same exact thing that a bank does. They lend you money. They get a note and a mortgage secured against the property just like a bank would. It's exactly the same as a bank lending you money, except it's a private individual who lends you the money. And then what I did with these properties, at one point, at the largest, when my portfolio was the largest, we had 42 rental units in total. That's what we had. So we held these properties from, we accumulated them over the years of 2012, 2013, 2014. I think it was about the end of 14 we had acquired them all. And then we kept them. And then in 2017 and 2018, we took about half of them and sold them. So we sold off about half of them. And because uh, you got to take some profits sometime in your life, right? You got to do that sometime. You can't just, real estate investors tend to be equity rich and cash poor. So if you never sell any of your buildings, how are you ever going to have any? I wanted to go into my bank account and see half a million sitting in there. So that's why I sold off about half of them, and I still have about 24 rental units down there. That's You know, I I love it, Phil, because whenever you talk about your Florida properties, I keep wishing that I had been with you or invested with you at that time because they are there's some beautiful properties back that down down there. Actually, you have them listed as still as vacation rentals, and, and you have quite a few left. 
how can people go to uh, how can people go rent, a, rent one of your places? Yeah, so our uh, our vacation rental properties down in uh, Siesta Key, Florida, can be found on gosiesta.com. Yeah, and they're kind of neat properties. They're actually really great. We actually we're actually planning something for our students, aren't we? For a an event down there, probably in the next six months. I know COVID destroyed everything that we were trying to do. You know, as far as uh, creating events and things like that, but we'll probably do something in the next six months. We'll have our students go down there. It'd be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, I'd actually like to get down there soon. So, uh, you know, get down there sooner rather than later. So, I I see we got a uh, caller in. We have the special caller. Why don't you introduce our special caller? All right. So uh, today we have on the line. We're honored to have Senator Doug Mastriano. I am so excited to have Senator Mastriano. Senator, are you there? I am here. Thank you for having me on, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Yeah, I have to tell you, I am like so excited just to hear your voice in my headphones. I have been following <laughs> you accidentally, like probably everyone else in Pennsylvania right now, because of everything that's going on with the masks and the shutdowns and the craziness that's going on. And you are definitely the light of the tunnel. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what's going on. You know, I don't know if everybody online knows who you are and knows how incredible you have been with this shutdown. But the one thing that we discovered after after doing a little bit of research on you is you're a genius. You're like Indiana Jones. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever met anybody. <laughs> Indiana <laughs> Jones? Where'd you come yeah, up with that I one? don't think I've ever met anybody who's got, what, what, what was it, uh, four master's degrees and a PhD? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, you are seriously, it's, it's amazing to me. I, you know, I think about you and I think about the fight that you're fighting right now. And, and look, and to be, and look, we're humbled on the, the, the fact that you're on our show. You've, you've been on several shows. You've been, I mean, you've been on Fox. You've been on all these other shows. I, I've heard you on a couple other shows on our station as well. And I am just impressed at everything you're doing and everything you're trying to do for the citizens of Pennsylvania. Why, why don't you tell us a little bit about what is really going on and how crazy it's gotten? Well, you know, so I retired from the Army about two years ago, and uh, I was really having a hard time. You can imagine, because your identity is wrapped up in, in the military and all the the connectivity with it and service to your country. And so 30 years active duty, and in my career field, there's no general officer. So if you make it to colonel, that's it. And, but, you know, and so at 30 years, it was time to, to retire. And I was complaining about the condition of the country and how I was handing it over to my son in worse condition than how I got it from my dad. And this young man looked over at me that I was complaining to, and he goes, well, Colonel, why don't you do something about it? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's right. Here I am whining, and I really don't like whiners. I, you know, I'm a man of action, obviously. And so an opportunity came to uh, run for office and turned down a good government job. And, and uh, I, it's, it's great to be serving in a different capacity with my people here in Pennsylvania. But I was sworn in about a year ago, and I never imagined that we'd be in a basic struggle and fight for our freedoms and rights. It's just I can't imagine. Had you asked me a year ago, my, my friends, that, uh, hey, next year uh, we're going to be telling you how, what you have to wear on your face, how you can go out, how business can operate, how, you know, how kids will go to school, I would just laugh at you that it's Orwellian novel stuff. But, man, we, we are in the midst of a 1984 novel, and everything we fought for in this country – over the past 244 years is really at risk. And that's not hyperbole. I, we've never had such an assault on our basic freedoms here for something that's not even a real threat to life. You know, it's funny you say that. I actually, I, I actually like, and, and we've actually had a couple of politicians on recently, and it's, it's unusual to have politicians. We're not a political show. We're really a show about, you know, making money and, and business and, and real estate and stock options. But we have become political accidentally only because of what's going on. And I, I honestly, I never cared who my governor was. I never cared who my senator was. In fact, if you would have told me uh, a year ago that I'd be talking to a senator on a radio show, I would, be, I would have been no way. And it, at this point, really, everyone needs to get involved. They need to get involved seriously i mean I, I don't think i've ever hated a a um <laughs> a politician as much as i hate governor wolf it's unbelievable what's going on well i mean to yeah. me i i have my own opinions about what's going on i'd love to hear i'd love to hear yours senator uh what do you what do you think is going on here do you think this is a uh, uh a strategy to take trump out of the white house because that's kind of where my head's at well, you know, it's it's really hard to say, and all I do know is, is that the left has, has gone to great limits and extremes here to attack our president. And I'm, I'm amazed that he's still standing because they, they've unleashed a heck upon him. And, you know, I think it's become 
an opportunity for them. I don't, I don't think it was a well-planned or structured uh, operation that they had laid out here for COVID, but it was an opportunity. And, you know, for the first couple of weeks of this whole thing, I, I'm sure, uh, like you guys, I, I did as well. We took the precautions. We waited. We braced ourselves for flattening the curve, and nothing happened. And then, the, you know, we watched our failed Secretary of, of Health play the numbers, exaggerate, double count, manipulate the numbers, sneak mommy away out of a, at a health care facility, unleash the plug into the health care facilities where 70% of our deaths are. Oh, and that then, was horrible. Yeah, that was horrible yeah. that they did that. And, and New Jersey, and too. Then moving, was terrible. Yeah. And then moving to goalposts. So now it's, it's the two eradication and vaccinations. I'm like, the Spanish flu was 102 years ago. We still have a vaccination. Like, come on. This, this is unrealistic. And watch the governor through this whole process here. It, it was like sleepwalking through a crisis. Every, every wrong decision that could be made, he made. And this is just not in hindsight. In the midst of this, I'm calling him out. Initially, when he was still talking to the Senate, you know, we're engaging him, trying to get him to adjust his plan. But when he realized he had all these mighty powers, unheard of of any governor in the history of Pennsylvania, he just walked this street alone with his secretary of health. And it's just been a disaster for our businesses, for our lives, for our families. And even now he's playing us. There's no reason for this heavy handed approach. Tell us what the precautions need to be and trust us to go out there and live our lives you know, as best we can. But think about this COVID-19. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man of facts. You know, so I'm looking at this here and it's like a ninety nine point five percent recovery rate if you get it. So that's such yeah, a yeah, exactly part of right. the whole thing. And so, you know, and then to play with our kids in schools now with all these draconian heavy handed mandates from our secretary of health and secretary of education. There's zero deaths for uh, young people 20 and under in Pennsylvania of, of the six thousand plus deaths we've had. So this is unnecessary. That They're the healthiest part of our population. Why would we treat healthy people like they have the virus? Normally in this kind of situation, you quarantine the sick and you protect the vulnerable, which is the elderly. And why punish our kids? And, in every, and only, only Governor Wolf could politicize mask wearing. It's become the symbol you know, of, of compliance and, and obeying his orders. And that's why I'm so outspoken on that. It's not about the mask. It's about what it symbolizes and what it means. Well, as much as uh, we're against the masks, I mean, I have some much bigger concerns right now, and uh, you probably can't say the crazy stuff I'm about to say, <laughs> but, but you know, I'm not a public figure, so I'm allowed to have wacky opinions if I want them. And, uh, you know, I see this whole thing as, as nothing more than the next attack on Trump, right? And uh, this, this uh, you know, am I the kind of person who believes in conspiracy theories when you hear them? Yeah, I, I, I kind of am. But it all kind of makes sense to me. They hate this man. They hate him with a passion. They'll do anything to get rid of him. Could you have ever imagined that a, a, you know, an impeachment hearing with, with not a, a single fact would ever occur? But that's already happened. They will do anything to get rid of this man. And right now, my biggest concern is mail-in voter oh, fraud on this presidential election coming up. Is there – are you concerned about that at all? Oh, my gosh, yes. What a disaster. And this was as a result of the, the voting reform we did last year, you know, the fall of last year. And it's once again, you know, Republicans – and I'll talk about my party. I, I, you know, people have trouble believing this. I'm not a partisan guy because all my life I served my country and I suspended my political views. But what I do believe, I believe personally, not because of the party. And, but uh, just my party here, what did we get out of this election reform except handing over the opportunity for lots of fraud for the Democrats? Three times I had our Secretary of State talking to me, twice private in my office and then once on a hearing, Secretary Bookbar. She's responsible for overseeing the elections. And three times I made the, the following statement to her, and she, ne she never gave me an answer. I said, why is it in Afghanistan where, where I helped supervise elections in Afghanistan, a war-torn third-world country? And why are their elections more safe and secure there? You know, they have retinal scans. They have, you know, you snip your finger in an inkwell. You're there in person. You have to bring an ID card. And wh why in Pennsylvania are you allowing such reckless destruction of our elections? And she just sat there and blinked all three times. And I'm, I just can't really make this stuff up. And so I'm very concerned about that. As, as far as the presidential election, I mean, it, it's very clear that, that the extreme left is just unhinged. And, you know, I deal with this. If you disagree with them, suddenly you become a bigot racist and all blah, blah, blah. You can't even take oh, it absolutely. serious. But it, it's, sad, yeah. it's sad that people actually still do, though. You know, are you a bigot? And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. So, <laughs> but at the same <laughs> so, time, you know, yeah. really, they, they, just, they, they hate him so much that it's become another opportunity. Because with the booming economy we had up until February, I, I mean, everything was looking great for him. There was going to be nothing to stop him. You know, every, every factor economically was booming for every segment of our society. And so this became an opportunity to destroy the economy in several states.
So here, here, here's something interesting, Senator. Uh, I, I, by the way, I just wanted to let you know, we, we have a caller. I, do, we, is it okay if we bring a caller in? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. But before we do that, I just want to hold on, John. Before you bring the caller in, just one thing. You know, here, here's part of what what I, my you know my thoughts on this, uh, on the continuing shutdown and the continuing state of emergency. Look, you know, Phil and I are money guys. We teach money. We teach people how to invest in real estate. We teach people how to invest in stock market. Obviously, if you want to become a student, go to investorschooling.com. You can find out more. But I look at I always look at the money side. What does what does this bring people? And it's what's really weird about this is I'm seeing things like SBA loans. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars going out to each person for SBA loans. There's the PPP loan. So sometimes I look at these businesses that were shut down for a couple of months, and I go, you know, maybe they're quiet because they're enjoying staying home and getting paid for it by the government. It is the oddest thing I have ever experienced in my entire life when it comes to fr really free money. Have you seen anything like this, or I mean, are you hearing this, or is this why, or do you have an opinion on it, and why maybe this is happening? Yeah, I do have an opinion on it, and this 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 is an introduction to socialism. The only problem is, yes. eventually you run out of eventually you run out of, of uh, absolutely other yes. money to spend. So right now we're drawing from the trough, and the trough isn't very deep. You guys know you talk about this oftentimes about the, the devastating effects of uh, our deficit and what have you, and our debt. And so the trough is there. People got a taste of it. And, and for the uninformed, it's like, wow, this is great. And I have heard from employers saying, I can't get my people back until yes, the money runs out too. because yes. they're, getting, they're getting paid more than what I can pay them. And, uh, you know, and for Governor Wolf, when he was asked by a, a very excellent journalist, uh, Ted, uh, asked, asked about that, Governor Wolf's response was, they just need to pay more money. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is not a free market. That's socialism you're talking about. Absolutely. Hey, Senator, let's bring on uh, let's bring on Cynthia. Uh, she's from Westmoreland County. Let's see what she has to say or what questions she has for you. Hey, Cynthia, are you there? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Senator. Oh. <laughs> Cynthia of Westmoreland, how are you, my friend? <laughs> Hi. Fine. Thank you. I follow you closely. Your fireside chats and your page, and um, you know the the whole mask thing, of course, is very oppressive. But I, I really think the governor is using this as a distraction from yes. a lot of the bigger issues. And, and we were, you were talking about uh, mail-in voting, huge concern. Um, but I haven't heard a whole lot about what happened with the, the issuance of, of your subpoena upon the governor to make transparent these decisions about uh, closing businesses, essential versus non-essential. I mean, I hear – the AG is not really pursuing the issue of, of what was done in the nursing homes, which is, which is just, in, you know, unbelievable to me. But it, it, who is pursuing the, the unconstitutionality of what he has done to the economy? Where is the accountability? It, it just I don't hear anything about it anymore. Thank you, Cynthia. So what happened is, as you know, I, back in April, I, I did two demands for access to the, the waiver process, that secret star chamber that the governor and his people used to decide which businesses could ha get a waiver. And we uh, finally issued a waiver through uh, the Emergency Preparedness Committee, and they came back a month later and only gave us one eighteenth of what we asked for, and it was just the current waivers. And the night before the, that list came out, they revoked several hundred waivers because we heard from business owners saying, "Why would I lose my license?" Obviously, they're trying to hide something. So what we did, it's been referred right. to the Commonwealth. Of, uh, it's, it's referred to the Commonwealth Court, and so now it has to go through the legal system, sadly. And we'll get it, but it's going to take a while. So I have, I have to tell you, Senator. Okay. Just a. And, and, and we appreciate your call, Cynthia. Thank you so much. Actually, I'm so glad you asked that because now you. I don't have to. <laughs> but I have to tell you a funny story. So while, while everything was shut down, Phil and I had actually – we started advertising. We stayed open, and we actually waited for Governor Wolf to show up or, or with his task force or whatever to show up, and he never showed up. But I have to play something for you. I, I'm sure you haven't heard this, but you're going to laugh at this. We actually made five commercials that we ran on various radio stations, and you need to hear this one. It's absolutely hysterical. Uh, when you talk about what was going on. So remember, this was this was about a month and a half ago when everything was shut down. This was the radio commercial that we were running. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sinus from InvestorSchooling.com. I am inviting you and, most importantly, 
Governor Tom Wolf to attend this Thursday night. <laughs> I'm going to teach you and Governor Tom Wolf real estate investing and stock options trading. We might even pull out the Constitution and read that as well. Looking forward to seeing you this Thursday night at InvestorSchooling.com. That's right, RSVP right now on InvestorSchooling.com. That whole <laughs> ad was political. Was it? I had no idea. Did you say anything about That's real estate hilarious. or stock options? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was just one. We, we got more. <laughs> yeah, we're the you we're the only guys you'll up. meet who, who spent. We spent about ten thousand dollars running anti Governor Wolf ads. Yeah, just to get people to the school, which was absolutely it was absolutely hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Thank you for doing that. You know, it's kind of sad though. I really wonder if he's read the Constitution because when we passed eight three six on June eighth, he came out the next day, you know, spitting mad. And I've never saw anywhere where one body in in their government can overrule another body i'm like obviously you haven't read the constitution so i, I thank yeah, you right. for trying to educate them <laughs> yeah what happened to the three the three branches of government i don't i don't fully understand that either you had a you had a bill that was supposed to like be passed no matter what right which was open up everything and and all this mess stuff goes away what happened to that Yes, it was a historic vote, but you wouldn't know that if you're reading the newspapers. I mean, oh my gosh, they ignored it. So 836, we voted on it bipartisan, but it wasn't two-third majority. Bipartisan support to end the emergency order. And we had two Democrat senators break ranks, and we had about 17, I think, in the House break ranks and join us. And it was all you, all the Republicans and the independents were with us. And uh, we uh, so we didn't have the two-thirds. And if you hand it to – now, here's the problem, and this is where people confuse on 836 because 836 was you know tossed out by, by mm -hmm. the Supreme Court, but I could talk to that. So instead of giving it to the governor who could veto that, we gave it to the secretary of state, the same one, Kathy Bookbar, and she was to inform him of this passing and he'd have to end his order. And that's actually – that's constitutional as well. But – he, uh, he refused to do that, so then we had a constitutional crisis, and, of course, the Supreme Court, which is he Pennsylvania Supreme Court, is heavily Democrat ruled against us, although one broke with us because I guess the guy actually read the Constitution. So what happens now is that we presented to Governor Wolf 836 formally. He'll veto it within the next uh, four or five days. He's got four or five days left. He's a 10-day limit. We gave it to him like last Wednesday. And then we'll have to come together and try to override that. And that's why I'm, I'm asking people, please exercise your constitutional rights and contact your representatives and senators, especially if they're Democrats, and appeal to them to end this emergency order. And this everything will end. The color codes, the mask, all this drama, reopen businesses as you see fit, not as Governor Wolf tells you. Yeah, now, how bizarre is it that, that the governor would destroy people's livelihoods just to take down Trump? So at the moment, we have another caller on the line. It's Lisa from Northeast Philly. John, please put her through. We like She wants to share with us a story about voter fraud. Lisa? Uh, yes, hi. Uh, hello, Senator. Uh, real quick, uh, I moved from Bucks County to Northeast Philly to take care of my elderly mother in 2015. When Trump was running for uh, in the primary, I switched my party to Republican and voted for Trump and have voted in every primary and general election since. That would be eight vote, eight uh, elections. I voted straight Republican, and my last time, last month, when I went in to vote, I go in the booth, and all there was was Democrats to pick from. And, and I'm like, what's going on? Oh, well, that's your party. Oh. No, it's not my party. I'm Republican. Oh, no, you're not. I, I so I made them print it out, hand printed ballot, you know, or print it so, so, so I could switch it and vote Republican. And I called a couple offices. I called the voters off the voter registration office. They looked into my record and they said, oh, no, we can't tell you who you voted for, but we know that you've in the last uh, since 2016. They're telling me and, that I've been vote, not only registered Democrat, but voting Democrat. Now, how is that possible when I vote in primaries and I've been voting for Republican? This time was the first time that I was tipped off that anything was wrong. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, uh, so you can't tell me that there's not vote. Now, I'm, in far, I'm one house outside of Bucks County into Philadelphia, so I'm far northeast. Wow. And, so what do you uh, think of that, well, Senator? Yes. Yeah. So what, well, what could you well, do to fix that, Senator? Senator it's actually a real question, right? Well, yeah, that, that's the real question. And then we, we need a modified voter reform. We need we need to get rid of this excuse free, just drop the ballot in the mail kind of thing. We need we need voter ID and all the things the Democrats stand against. At least the now, biggest problem in the area. But I went in person, that, that, sir. 
I went in I person you. every time. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So here's the biggest problem: why, why you're, the books are wrong there? It's local government. The county and local government here obviously is on the, in, in the other party and not doing their due diligence here. We need to have right. a law where, where they have to clean up the books every several years, not every five or six years, because that, that, that overlaps with another presidential election. Because we know for several of these counties, there's just tens of thousands of people on the book who, books who aren't there anymore. Right. Right. Well, yeah, well, but Lisa, I, we I thank don't... you. Yeah. We thank you. For, we have to move on. I apologize. We have to move on. Uh, we have many other things to talk about, but you definitely want to change your affiliation. Get get it going. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. So, <laughs> Senator, what, so what's going on with these masks? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I've seen you a lot. I don't know what you've seen a, about me, but I'm like the anti-mask guy. I've got this whole following of people uh, who are anti-mask. I actually have a I have a Facebook page called High Five No Mask. And I've been having people take pictures of themselves <laughs> high fiving other people without wearing masks. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, oh, first off, let's ask off. Is it is it medically and scientifically necessary? But, and I, you know, Fauci, everyone has bowed at his altar. I mean, look, he, he he's he's a, a staff person. We, in, in the army, we ask the staff person for their opinion, but then the, the commander or this in this case here, the elected officials make the decision. We didn't elect him for nothing, so we get his opinion, and he changes his mind like every day. And well, I Fauci's got some really time. strange history, you know. Uh, yes, he he supposedly got secret patents, and you name it. That guy's crooked <laughs> as uh, as a dog's leg. Hey, Phil's a definitely a conspiracy theorist, so you know we could we can go through all the conspiracies <laughs> with Phil if you want. I can tell I can tell the senator and I are in sync, but he can't say <laughs> these things. I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, Fauci's out there saying you know, the mask won't, won't work for you because it just makes you feel better. And I'm like, oh, so why are we bowing at this altar here? And the, the, but the bottom line is, you should have the choice. You know, the Democrats go out there, regardless of your pers- you know, your view on abortion, my body, my choice. Well, when it really is your body, they're not giving you a choice. Now, obviously, if it's a baby, it's someone else's body. But when I, now it's my body, you tell me what to put on my face. And, and yeah, for right. the governor to come out with with his Orwellian posters, he's put he has an Orwellian poster of Statue of Liberty with a gag over a mask. I call it gag. And they also have these posters. You know, your mask gives you more freedom. I'm like, only Orwell could make this up. 1984. I'm like, yeah, right. Scott, there's no sign of intelligent life. Do you know I started reading? I started actually reading Animal Farm this morning again because I remembered it as a child. Wow. And I started reading it again, and I'm I'm blown away by just just like halfway through it. I'm like, wow! Everybody out there should read Animal Farm in 1984 right now and go, holy cow! This guy was definitely a prophet. Yes. <laughs> and also, I, I, I yes. ran too. Also, uh, you know, um, uh, Atlas Shrugged. What a what a what another story, right? So so what, so what, what about the mess? What what can we do about this? I, actually, you know what? We have a call. You know, let, let's grab this real quick because I, I like this call. I like what he has to say. Hey, Evan, why don't you why don't you uh, tell, ask the ask the governor what your question is? Hey, Larry, can you hear me? Okay, I can. I know who this is actually. All right. <laughs> hey, so first, I want to I just want to make a quick comment. Um, I was at Whole Foods the other day, and uh, they came up to me, and I don't wear a mask when I go into these grocery stores. They came up to me and said. Hey, uh, excuse me. We have a policy that we have, that everybody wears a mask, and I said, "Oh, I'm exempt." And and, and he kind of just like it was like kind of shocked. And he's like, "He was, you know, just a kid. He was like working there." But um, you just all you got to do is say you're exempt, and uh, and they'll back <laughs> off usually. <laughs> I love yeah, it. T- well, they are now. But they weren't question. at first, though. Yeah. I mean, they weren't at first. Now they are. Now they're not yeah. sure what to do because there's been so many. There's been so many things happening, such as uh, you know, sh- one guy got shot, one of the security guys got shot, and then you got people complaining and mm-hmm. suing, and yeah. so nobody knows what to do anymore. My 22 year old son hasn't worn a mask anywhere, and I said, "Well, how do you get away with that?" He says, "I tell people I got asthma." So I actually <laughs> discovered that well, there was I'm an article that said, "I have asthma." Well, hey, but how about this one? Evan? I discovered. Asthma. I discovered there's an article out there that says that people who don't wear masks are psychopaths. So when somebody says, hey, you know, you need to wear a mask, I say, well, you know, I, I have a medical condition. And if they ask, I say, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a mortgage guy friend who, who recently got sick, and he thought he had COVID. He goes to get the test, and he's told he has a respiratory illness because he's been wearing, wearing a mask, mask too yeah. much. 
Oh yeah, my that's exactly goodness. what happened. It's it's insane. These people are nuts. I had an argue with my mother on the way here, on the way to because I was all excited that I was interview, interviewing you, Senator, and and we're having an argument over the mask. And she says, "I'm in Florida. How could you say that? There's so many different. There's so many people getting sick here." And blah, blah. I'm like, "Mom, go read. Wait, has anybody read the CDC website on what they say about masks? I don't know, Senator, if you've even read it, it actually says don't wear them." <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes. Okay. If I can slide in here real quick. So it, it's not the, uh, the amount of uh, positive cases. It's the amount of deaths and the amount of people that are hospitalized or have serious yes. Uh, yes. reactions to it. So the, the positives mean nothing. You're right. And, you know, it's funny. Tra Tracy is – I see her on Facebook. She says, it's a real illness. Yes, we all know it's real. None, none of us are denying that COVID isn't real. We're denying the, the severity of it, and we're ni denying the fact that whether masks or opening businesses are going to affect it. But I know we keep we keep uh, interrupting you, Evan. What is your question for the senator directly? <laughs> All right, so just, Senator, I I just have to say I'm I'm I just uh, I'm a longtime friend of Larry, and he said he said he was having you on the show today. I'm ashamed that I didn't know who you were prior to this because I watched a couple <laughs> of your videos and I was very impressed. I really like a lot of the stuff you have to say. But my question is, how do we get this non-essential, pandering, <laughs> scumbag coward Tom Wolf out of office? <laughs> Wow. So tell me how you really <laughs> feel, brother. <laughs> you know, the, 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 there is no recall in the state that I'm aware of. The only thing we could do, is the only action we have is the impeachment articles. Daryl Metcalf outside of the Pittsburgh area, he's introduced five articles of impeachment. Hopefully, I, I'll have to talk to him on the timeline. I'm hoping it'll happen in September. I'm probably speaking at term here. Some Republicans are concerned it's going to bounce back on us and bite us in the bud like it did with Trump. But the problem was with Trump, the Democrats just made stuff up. This, this is all real stuff here. Transparency, you know, uh, mistreatment, mass, uh, essential, non-essential, uh, maybe shenanigans as far as picking winners and losers. And so the people need to hear this. It will pass in the House. You need a simple majority. The problem is the Senate. We'll, we'll need four or five Democrat senators to break ranks. And that's a tall order. They're very committed to their party, not to the people. That's, but that's enough. if they hear from enough citizens, it might work. Yeah, let's get him but, out. Okay. Evan, so, get him out, Evan. But, get him out. But, but I think there's got to be other ways, though, to get him out. Well, I mean, if, if, if he's done something nefarious, um, but our attorney general, will he, you know, the state one, will he investigate it? No. Uh, maybe attorney general Barr, if they find, but it's got something really big to come on a governor like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, don't think, I, mean, I don't think it's something you can actually do, Evan. I think it's one of those things where you just have to wait it out. And, and by the way, Governor, I'm, I'm not Governor, there you go, Senator. <laughs> we uh, need to know the governor. scoop, man. We, we need I'll, to know I'll the scoop. I'll be back on the radio. <laughs> go ahead. We, okay. we need to know the scoop. What's the scoop? Come on. It would, it would be great if you announced <laughs> on our show. <laughs> Hey, I, I have a Senate uh, re-election campaign to win here, and I, 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 I'm straight up with people. I, I'm no politician. I'm an elected official. I'm a public servant, as I've been all my life, whether in uniform or out. And uh, honestly, there's three things that I'm looking for here before we make that, that big decision. It's huge. It's a big state. It's the first off, we need to you know, get a clear leading you know, from God on that. And second off, it's going to have to be a groundswell of support from the people across the state. They're going to have to push us into it. And then the third, of course, is getting sufficient resources to run campaigns in 67 counties. Well, I tell you what, we have look, we have a lot of reach. We have a lot of reach with uh, with Facebook. We have a lot of reach with a lot of different things. If you need our help, you just reach out. We will be more than wow, happy to help you because I am so impressed by everything you're doing. And I happen to like you. You're a really cool guy. And like I said, you're Indiana Jones. <laughs> Well, hey, I, 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 I got to play another funny commercial for you. This is this is this is another one that's really funny because it actually goes really well with the uh, with the mask thing. This is another commercial that we had running, so you could just imagine the 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 the, <laughs> the the comedy in this one. But check this one out. Hi, I'm Phil Falcone from InvestorSchooling.com. I want to invite you to a complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 p.m. in Langhorn. Our bubble buoy suits will protect you from the Chinese Wuhan <laughs> death virus. Does that make me sound like a racist? You can also attend via Zoom. Just sign up at InvestorSchooling.com. We will teach you real estate investing and stock option investing. Real estate has been around since before Jesus' time. And stock options came like just a couple weeks later. So get your butt to this meeting and learn these skills. I have faith in our bubble boy suits. They will protect you from the Chinese Wuhan death virus. But going to the bathroom in these things is harder than getting Mao Zedong wolf to open up Pennsylvania. So, 
If you're not a snowflake and you're not scared of the big bad wolf, come Thursday night at 7 o'clock, investorschooling.com. Hey, is this the strangest show you've been on so far? <laughs> you guys are hilarious. I need to be in the studio next time. Oh, my goodness. You guys are like brothers to me over there. I'm thinking oh, about absolutely. the same thing here. <laughs> Look, uh, just to share with you, Senator, one of the things we do with our show is we simulcast our show in the Philadelphia area on six different radio stations. So wow. uh, when you're in the area, you come and see us. We'll help you out. Yeah, but you, but you have to wear wow. a mask. <laughs> you got a friend here. But but let's let's just let's stop talking about masks for a minute. Look, I'm totally against the masks in a whole bit, but I'm more concerned about voter fraud and losing this election. They're gonna pull out every stop. They're gonna cheat, lie, and steal like they always do. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about the National Democratic Party. They're the ones giving Wolf the marching orders of what to do. I'm really concerned about what's gonna happen in November. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Uh, you, you, you get me on a funny guy commercial. Now you ask me a serious question. You're killing me. Yeah, really. What's my, wrong my with you, Phil? We're having some fun with this guy. <laughs> okay, well, you, we can be serious and funny at the same time, can't we? <laughs> I'll, I'll try to pivot. Let's see. You, you know what, brother? It, this, is, this is a big deal here because if people don't trust the results of the elections, they're not going to come out and vote. And then what do you have there? You have a handful of people picking winners and losers in the election. It, it needs to be tightened up here. Uh, right, and don't please don't roll your eyes on this here because this is how it happens in the Senate, and we can debate whether it's effective or not. It's the first thing is there's going to be hearings, and the, and the hearings are useful because we find out what's going on. We actually get like Secretary Levine. In this case, it wouldn't be that, but Secretary Levine admits to some of the bad decisions, you know, when pressed by some of the Republican senators. So we'll have to do hearings to find out exactly what the problem is. Bring in county commissioners and others. And actually, right before the primary, we brought in some county commissioners. There's a Zoom hearing. And uh, I was one of the few voices actually uh, having opposition and concern about this mail-in thing. And I was like, oh, this is a pretty solitary voice here. I mean, there was a couple other Republicans, but mostly people were enthusiastic about it. And one of the county commissioners was like, I agree with Mastriana. This, this is like Afghanistan. You know, we, we need to tighten it up here. And why are elections so loosey-goosey? But major legislation and laws need to be passed. But here's the problem. We've handed the governor – a golden ticket with this loosey goosey election process here, and he's not going to sign anything into law. So we're kind of stuck with this, I think, unless we get two thirds of votes to override it. Yeah, I have a I have a ten thousand dollar bet. You ready for this? I have a ten thousand dollar bet. My mother, she actually put it up. She goes, "I'm going to bet you ten I said her, I said this virus is going to go away in the middle of November, and she said, "I'll bet you ten thousand dollars it doesn't." And I'm like, "You're on," because it's it's quite <laughs> obvious what's what's going on here. This is this is clearly a. a, a a way to get to, you know to get Trump out of here, and it's terrible. It really okay, is. Okay, well, let's just say that that happens. Let's just say that that happens, okay. and 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 the, and and the Democrats win the election. I'm pretty concerned about what might happen after that because well, you're going to have an awful lot of angry people, and things are going to get crazy. Yeah. So did you did you hear Senator, did you hear what's going on in Philadelphia with the uh, moratorium on on uh, landlords uh, and, and evictions? Because this is a major problem for our you know our, our industry, what we're around all the time. I, I mean, I, I realize it's not really your area, but it may. But I don't know if you. Are you familiar with it at all or no? I am because I, I had to read the governor's edict on that. Oh, okay, great. So, I mean, can you, can you, I, I mean, can you believe what's going? Contract law means nothing right now. It's unbelievable what they're actually saying. My, I, I'm, I got, you got to laugh. I'll my do, mother do. just, my mother just responded on the Facebook Live. She said it won't go away in November. So just so you know, it was a real conversation. <laughs> Some, some of the things that are going on, so you know about the issues in Philly. You can't evict anybody until December. You, uh, there's good, they're trying to push rent control and a number yes. of other ridiculous yes. things. And the rent control was the only one that didn't get passed, which is, which is amazing. But they're saying no evictions. You have to work out nine months with your, you have to work out nine months with your, uh, with your landlord. If you, the landlord has to work out with your tenant, nine months payback. It's, it's insane what they're coming up with. And the, no, and the eviction, it's just, it's like, wow, did they actually destroy landlords right now? I don't know if you're a real estate investor, Senator, but if you are, it's, it's terrible. All I do know, it's an overturning of our entire society. This is, everything the governor is doing here is turning things on its head. And it's basically calling good evil and evil good. And so he's, he's making it easy for you to skip out on your job because he's going to pay you more if you don't work. You stay right. home and yeah. stay safe. And, and he's, pu he's punishing small businesses who, by the way, tend to be the biggest donors to Republicans and tend to be Republican generally, and as well as landowners as well. 
And, and you know that Jen, I mean, I, there's lots of exceptions I got it, but probably 60, 70 percent in our favor. So he's overturning. And notice who the winners are. It's mega stores, box stores, you know, online, Amazon, you know, things that tend to lean left. And this is troubling to me because it's a, it's a long game. The Democrats, I do hand it to them. They're, they're very strategic and they're very dedicated to the cause. I mean, they're rabidly dedicated to their cause. But they stick together, unlike Republicans, and then they have a long-term game. Meanwhile, we're, we're fighting these little skirmishes here, and they have us on every area. But we got to win this next election, and, and that's why I'm heartened because I'm looking at your show, and you have more than 400 uh, live viewers on, on Facebook right now, and probably tens of thousands right now across Philly. People are engaged, sure. and they want to get yeah. the country back. They want to take Pennsylvania back. We're not standing aside anymore, so there is hope. Yeah, and, and I think what you said was interesting, too, because I remember when I voted in the primary, I saw outside the primary, I saw Democrats handing out ballots, talking to people, hey, vote for so-and-so. And I'm like, whoa, 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 you, you know, wrong side for me. But the fact that they were there and there wasn't one Republican there or one person representing the Republican Party handing out ballots or anything, that clearly says that that's the difference. They're organized and the Republicans are not organized. They need to get organized. Somebody needs to actually sit down and say, listen, guys, go vote. We, we have a, a little bit of an issue here. When, when people think that Trump is winning, they're not going to go vote for him. They're not going to go vote for mm -hmm. any Republicans. They think they're winning. In fact, that's kind of what happened, I believe, what, what, what really hurt Hillary. The biggest thing that hurt Hillary, well, I, well anyway, a lot of things hurt Hillary, but, but the fact that everyone thought she was going to win and the Democrats said, actually backed off and said, who cares, she's going to win, and we got lucky on that one. I think we got to be really careful this, this time yeah. to make sure that all the Republicans go out and vote. Especially if you don't, if you want to be able to go to a movie again, if you want to go go to a restaurant again, if you want yes. to have a normal life again. By the way, I hate the words "new normal." Don't ever say it to me. I will go nuts. <laughs> you know, and I'm looking right here and, and, and on Facebook. Annette Flynn, one of my, uh, I'll call her one of my friends. Uh, she said she emailed 108 Democrat representatives and senators on 836 uh, the past couple of days. This, this has never happened, at least not in my lifetime, where, where a constituency, the body and, and, and citizens of Pennsylvania are rising up and having their voices heard across the state. One of my colleagues, when we were pushing 323, the, my, my version of 836 and the emergency order, uh, one of my colleagues said, well, tell me about your bill. I'm like, so, I'm like you didn't care about it last week. Why are you asking? Because well, about 3,000 people great. emailed me over the weekend. So really? Good attention. for you. And, that can that could flip votes, and so when I see Annette and so many other people uh, writing me and saying, "Hey, we are engaging to try to get people to, to vote the way they should, and not the way their party wants them to." All right, Senator, we got another caller for you. We got Pamela from Stroudsburg, and she's on hold. She wants to talk to you about pressuring Wolf over the budget. Pamela, you're on. Hello, Senator Mastriano. Hope this finds you Pamela. doing well today. <laughs> Thank you for calling um, in. I, absolutely. Um, I've had the opportunity, as I've listened to you many times um, in the evenings on your fireside chat, you have talked about the power of the purse. And I'm wondering why that's not being used more to kind of uh, push the governor a little way, you know, to make him concede a little more. If the legislature holds that power, why is that not being used more? as well as telling him no more things are getting passed or pushed through, nothing, until you give over the power you belong back to us. We're not doing a thing for you, nothing. That's my question. Yes. Thank you, Pamela. And I love Stroudsburg. It's a beautiful area there. You know, I, I'm in 100 percent agreement with you. And it's like we're a co-equal branch of the government. Why don't we act like that? Why don't we really put the screws to him on some of these issues here? Why don't we cut his budget funding, which is, he won like a $10 million increase this year, why are we being so generous with all these uh, universities who indoctrinate kids and, and put a post out there this past weekend, Penn State, saying oh, oh, conservative voices matter, and then they take it down because of the, the outrage. I'm like, why are we using public dollars for any of these things here? And we get nothing out of it except we lose voters and we lose support and we watch our state fall away. We need to be more proactive about that. Uh, if, if I had a say in this here, I would defund any of the agencies going around. They're their line item numbers that allow this for their inspectors to go to terrorize citizens who have opened their businesses or going around handing in fines like several businesses in Lebanon County and York County. I, I would I would gut that out there. I would defund any organization here that's working against us that, that are being complicit in these unconstitutional uh, exercises of, of wolf's edicts that are going out there and oppressing our people. So, yes, we do have the power, and we need to use it. 
Awesome, awesome. Hey, Senator, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play another commercial for you. I think we we, we didn't plan it for our commercials because you, your time is much more valuable to us or to you or, or to everyone, <laughs> I guess, out there, right? But every once in a while, I got, I gotta throw something in here. But one of these commercials, you're gonna like this one too. Again, this is when we, when the world was closed. You'll appreciate this one as well. Hey, everybody, it's Larry Sanders from InvestorSchooling.com, and I want to report a crime. That's right, a crime. I want to let you know that Investor Schooling will be open this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and I will be there. That means I opened my business, and that means I will be there. That means that I committed a crime. If you want to commit a crime and you want to learn real estate investing and stock options trading, come to Investor Schooling this Thursday night. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now. InvestorSchooling.com. See you there. We, we actually ran these commercials. I know you, 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 know you might even find it hard to believe, but we really ran these commercials. No, not, not only did we run them, we paid good money. For <laughs> we them. did, that's right. Because the usual radio stations that we run our commercials on, they weren't all comfortable running these. <laughs> So we, we had to pay extra to get them run. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, you know, you, you guys, there's so much truth what you said. So when do we reach a tipping point here? You know, in the end, it's not about the, the, the mask. That, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a side issue and a greater issue. But, I you agree. know, for instance, in 1775, in 1775, it wasn't about the tea in Boston Harbor. It was about that tea symbolized, a, 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 a monopoly you just had to buy the king's tea. And so that's the thing about the mask and all these other things here. It, it's symbolic of a greater problem. We have Governor Wolf that has a heavy hand. He's on our backs and in our wallets, and we just want to be left the heck alone and live our lives without him telling us how to live our lives. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And listen, I, I just have to say, I, I, I have to. We, we do, we do need to pay the bills here every once in a while. So if anybody out there, if you, by the way, if you're too far from us, you can actually attend our class via Zoom. So if you go to investorschooling.com, you could sign up for our class, and you could learn more about real estate investing, stock options training, and look. This is why the center is on here, because it is so important that everyone understand that there are financial ramifications to what's going on, and we're teaching them, and we're teaching ways to get around. You know, Senator, we actually, you know, we talked about the SBA loan earlier. We actually did a class on how to get the SBA loan, and we probably got two or three million dollars worth of SBA loans in our school because of people who didn't even know how to get it. That's it. That, I always find that fascinating, too. It's like, who are, these, who are these loans for if no one knows how to get them? And the application was the simplest thing. By the way, if you're listening and you didn't, haven't done it yet, go to sba.gov and get one. I mean, I realize that eventually the money's going to run out, but you might as well take what you can, especially at 3.75% interest. So, uh, Senator, yes, I just exactly. wanted to say uh, I, was, I was reading your biography, and I see that you're a military history expert. And uh, if you ever come down here in person, you and I, we could have some fun talks about that. I'm, a, I'm an amateur military history guy. I, I watch <laughs> Every documentary, read books on it. I, lo I just love history. It's great. Yeah, I, I, well, actually, that's you, why you I love you, man. That's fantastic. He's into it. Yeah, he's, de he's <laughs> definitely into great. it. Well, as soon as I told him about you, he was like, "I got to, I got to talk to this guy. I can't wait." Oh yeah. man, I, I can like give to you teach. a tour of Gettysburg. That'd be unforgettable. Oh, Gettysburg. You know what? It's, it's in my district. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You tell me when we'll, we'll be there, and we'll be there with cameras. That sounds like a bargain. Okay. Yeah, we'll be there with cameras, Let's and we'll talk. To, absolutely. We we actually have a we actually have a film crew here because we do a lot of filming. We have a film crew here. We have a guy who made a movie, uh, another guy who does what? television shows. So we would be more than happy to do it and do it and do it a whole a whole show on it. That would be fun. Wow. Okay. We're, we're going to do it. I'll have my secretary give you guys a call and coordinate a date. It's considered done. Awesome. That's awesome. awesome. I'm excited about that. So Larry, you got a couple minutes. You want to give give out some uh, stock option picks of the yeah, week? Yeah. So I don't know if you're into the stock market, Doug, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we what you can do this week to make some money. You ready? Yes. Go right, for here, it. Here you go. So I don't know if you're a stock option trader, but if you're a stock trader, here's what I would recommend that you buy this week because what's going on right now in the market is awesome. We got earnings coming up and we got craziness coming up all at the same time. So. One of my favorite picks right now, believe it or not, is a bank. It's Wells Fargo Bank. And the reason it's Wells Fargo Bank is because of the PPP and, and the SBA loans. The PPP loans, what happened was all these banks, they were given – and again, I don't, know, I don't know if anybody knows this, but the banks were given a 5% commission on every loan that they gave out. I mean, it's insane. That's how they bailed out the banks this time. 2008 was totally different than this time. And they bailed out the banks by giving the bank a commission of 5% of every loan. So when you heard some of these big companies getting a, you know, a $2 million, $20 million, $10 million, 
they have because for every million, the bank got fifty thousand dollars. So their earnings are going to come up this in about a week or two, depending on which bank it is. Wells Fargo, I think, is on the seventeenth, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But their Wells Fargo's earnings is going to be great because of the the uh, PPP loans, not because you know a lot of people are not paying their mortgages and they're on forgiveness, but it's it's fine. So that's one that I would do. I also I also like the the uh, American Airlines because eventually masks are going to go away. And when masks go away, American Airlines is gonna is gonna rock it. Now I'm go. By the way, Senator, I'm going away next week. I'm going to Vegas, and I am like so upset that I'm going to Vegas and I have to wear a mask for five hours on an airplane. Can you can you uh, can you write me a doctor's note? <laughs> yeah, doctor of history, Doctor Matt Vietta, yeah. PhD in history. Well, come on, you're a PhD. All I need is a doctor. I just need the doctor in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only good thing my dissertation's for is maybe drop it on your chest, and hopefully your heart will bounce back. But other than that, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my picks. Uh, uh, what do we got? We got about two minutes left, Phil? I'm not yeah, even sure where yeah. we are here. You, give, give us another stock pick, and then I got to <laughs> take over. Okay, and then once again, we got Facebook, which is if Facebook drops, if we can actually get lucky enough for Facebook to drop another uh, you know, to, to 220 again, I would ride that into earnings. Look for a drop anyway, because usually there's a drop right before earnings. Hopefully, we'll get a 10 to 15 point drop, and then we could jump in. And in stock options, you can make 30% on your money really, really fast. And, uh, Senator, if you ever want to learn stock options trading or real estate investing, you need to come by because we teach this stuff, and we got students making a lot of money very fast. So, Senator, we love you. Thank you so much for being on the show. You are Awesome, and I'm looking forward to doing that uh, that show with you. The uh, actually filming the Gettysburg thing that would be awesome. We got a bunch of camera guys here, and I'm looking forward to it. I think I got to turn it over to Phil so he could say goodbye to everybody. All right, so we want to thank Senator Doug Mastriano for being on the show today. We also want to thank our producer John Cole for helping us out today. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor on our show, you can email us. Info at investorschooling.com. That's info at investorschooling.com. We'll see you here next week at Investor Schooling Live, 3 p.m. every Sunday. And we also run on 2 p.m. on Saturday at 1210 a.m. Don't forget to visit InvestorSchooling.com for your free complimentary class uh, where you can learn about real estate investing and stock option investing. It's Thursday night at 7 p.m. InvestorSchooling.com. Thursday night at 7 p.m. InvestorSchooling.com. We also have a brokerage, Investor Brokerage, where you can hang your license and do some of the crazy real estate transactions that we do here at uh, 108 Corporate Drive, Langhorne, Pennsylvania, 19047. That's InvestorSchooling.com. And anything else you want to talk about, Larry? You got about 30 seconds. I, I just want to say, again, it was probably the greatest show you ever did with the senator. The senator was the awesome. awesome. Um, and you guys were awesome. And everybody watching and listening, thank you so much for being here. We look forward to talking to you again. I think, what do we got? I don't know. I ran out of time. What do we got? Yeah, you still got 30 seconds. We got 30 seconds. What do you want to do? You want to talk about something fun? Buy stock options. Make money. Buy real estate. Make money. Real estate is the best way to make money in your, you'll ever have in your entire life. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. Find out more about that. And uh, I don't know. I'm like, I, uh, I got one more thing. So right, on, uh, on August 29th, the Hapro Car Show, I have an I Buy Houses store right at the corner of Byberry in York. Between the hours of 5 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening, the Hapro Car Show, August 29th. Come on out. We're going to be having a kitty bounce. We're going to have free beer. We got a live band. And the and senator's you... going to stop by? Oh, wait. <laughs> and you come on out and we can talk about <laughs> real estate investing and stock option investing. All right, people, we're out of here. All right.